Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with another 100% achievement guide and this time we're going to be grabbing it all in Kato. A pretty beautiful puzzle adventure game developed by Subhead Games, published by Humble Bundle <laughs> and is available to you for just £16.74 but once again this delightful little game is on Xbox Game Pass so right now go 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 get that stuff. Now this game tells the story of, well, Kato, a little girl who ends up losing her grandmother. Pfft, top grandmother in though, am I right? I'd <laughs> be fuming, I would. Um, but our job is basically to find her again. Oh yeah, she doesn't look for us much, no, we actually have to find her. Yeah, nice. So the way we do that is we find new pieces of the map and we can actually move, change and swap those pieces of the map to get where we need to go. It's different, but it is very excellent. A warning right now though, to get all of the achievements to pop without no worries at all, it is actually advised to complete this game in one sitting. So if you quit and come back, the achievement for completing the game 100% may not unlock. So set yourself a few hours aside and smash it. Also in chapters 4, 6, 8 and 10, there are a load of books we need to read, but I'll let you know exactly what we need to do when we need to do them. Plus there's always the story related ones and easy miscellaneous ones in most chapters. Either way, this should only take you around 3-4 to four hours to unlock, maybe less, maybe more, depending on your speed and luck. So, let's get a cracking, shall we? So, we are seemingly woken up on this lovely desert island. That's most people's dreams, right? Until it starts getting all kind of lost-like and big shadow monsters start trying to catch you and kill you and stuff. Anyway... Yep, you can move around by obviously using the left stick, as is the norm in most games. And then it's usually with the A button to interact with most items. You press Y to open up the map, and this basically just tells you obviously what to do. You move the map around using the left stick, uh, left bumper, right bumper to switch the map around. And you can connect the same pieces of the map. But you've got to do it with the same parts of the island. So obviously sand won't go onto water. As you can see, sand will only go on sand. Very simple, but of course, it does get a little bit more trickier through the game. So when we do that, then you just head up, grab the next piece of the map, and then that's it. Game's completed. Well done. If only it was that easy, of course. So obviously, we need to be finding a lot of these uh, pieces of puzzle maps. Now, obviously, throughout the first sort of four or five chapters, it is very easy enough, but from sort of chapter six to ten, it can get a little bit more complicated. So obviously it's worth just, um, you know, taking your time and just making sure that you're copying basically exactly as I do here. So we get a new puzzle uh, piece put at the top of the map right there. And that reveals this hut to us. A little, little tribe. The Rarg tribe, I suppose. Grab the, the other map piece. And then we're going to put that just to the left of it. So again, I try going... Sort of fast, but sort of slow, so you can keep up. My, uh, remember to grab the map piece on the left-hand side. So when I'm, yeah, when I'm actually on the map, I do try and take my time with it. If you feel that I am going too fast, you know, uh, slow the video down. Um, it's it's worth doing. I do try to go as slow as I can, but hopefully I've done it enough that you can either keep up well or that it's not too complicated. So with the new piece, then just put it to the right of where you are, and that reveals like a captain or. Uh, one of the Ra tribes. Obviously, it's not a Ra tribe. The, the little kid just said Ra, so that's what I named him. By the way, you can just press the A button just to smash the dialogue quick as you can. So, press Y. We're going to go back into our map now. Take the same piece that you're standing on, and then basically put it to the right, uh, right, and then down once. Fling it around so that the sand is connecting, and this is where we get a new map piece. And the guy lives in like a fish hut, or look like kind of fish gut hut. <laughs> fish gut hut. So, just cut. Yeah, it's it's worth. To, I'm obviously not going to explain every single little thing that I do <laughs> with the map pieces, but it's obviously worth just pausing or you know just trying to keep along at the, the same as I do. I it, it can get a little bit hectic from time to time. But hopefully you can keep up without me yammering on and then you miss something anyway. So this is um, one of the pst 
tribe members now. It's the same kid from earlier, actually, but we're going to uh, <laughs> grab the two map pieces now. So we're going to be smashing them on. And it's all just forest. So, so we need to make a little gap in the middle. And then what we need to do is get the two pieces. But the one with this sort of little bit of water or something on it needs to go above. And the one which is all forest needs to actually go in the middle. And that will reveal a hut. And then we can go and find our new friend, Shirenan. 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 Kind of sounds like a old, thick Irish accent guy who's telling you to do something to your nan. That's Shirenan. Oh, shag your nan. Sort of. Ish. But there it is, anyway. Come back, shag your nan. Uh, well, she's gone. So we can actually go inside, and these people are going to be like, bro, what the hell? But on the wall, there's going to be a seashell necklace, so we're going to take that once Fred Flintstone there stopped talking to you. And then we're just going to head up. And we're actually going to uh, get our new map piece, and then put that. Obviously, connect the bits of water. There we go. And then we can actually talk to Shaginan. Shaginan, sorry, why do I keep saying that? So after meeting with this girl once, you're basically now best friends, which doesn't happen anymore because they haven't done it online and it's not official unless it's on Facebook. Everyone knows that rule, of course. Uh, so we're going to grab the two... Uh, we basically need to make a, a path to the right now. So grab the bit of sand forest down the bottom there and put it on the right-hand side. Connect the two sand pieces up. And then just head to the right and there's going to be like, I don't know, some, a little mound of mud that we need to actually dig up. Luckily, it's not poop, because that would be hilariously annoying. But <laughs> once you're done, head back to old Shoyrenan. So she's given us a new piece, so press X to get the new piece up, and then put it up north, connect the sand, and that is where our boat lies. So, we just met this girl, we've come to the Rar and Pst tribe, and apparently we're off on a big massive adventure together. Nice! So you go ahead and uh, you'll have to talk to um, Wilma Flintstone on the right here, you know, the kind of more dark depressing looking Wilma Flintstone. Then speak to Shinan, basically say yes, we're ready to go, and then for about a minute or two there's going to be a lot of um, cutscene, um, all them just talking, the Flintstones are going to get together one last time, and then we're going to be set in sail, and that'll be chapter one complete. So there you go, nice motion over. By the way, in case you didn't notice, Kato only seems to respond 
with emojis. Can't beat it. So head to the right on this little island here. We're going to grab the first map piece of the island. And oh, ha, ha. oh, we see some sheep in the bushes. This is every Welshman's dream. I'm literally just getting that joke in there before uh, all the English do. Because that joke, it just always happens, doesn't it? Yes, we shag sheep, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, head to the left and grab the uh, next map piece. And uh, we're going to get them both up now. We've got some with mushrooms on it. Not magic, so don't even think about it. And one with what looks like a little wiener going into mushrooms, but it's just a nice little path for us to go on. And it'll always start. There's going to be another map piece and a sleeping little boy. In fact, there's no map piece, sorry. It's just the sleeping boy. And this guy's name is Mo. I'm going to call him Mo Sizzlack for Simpsons-related stuff. So what we need to do, head sort of to the top left, there's going to be a sheep. Uh, interact with it by pressing the A button, of course, and it's going to basically tell us to fudge yourself. So we need to go back to Mo Sizzlack here. And the only way to get our sheep, or his sheep herded to him, is with this certain fruit. I mean, I wish he told us that in the beginning, but that's alright. So, head uh, directly to the left and we're going to see this uh, hippie woman. She looks a bit hippie-ish, but what she's going to do is tell us what fruit that we need. Honey fruit. So, the Red Devils. Go on, United. Red Devils. Anyway, the honey fruit is literally just to the, a little bit to the right top from where she was. So, now we need to get all three sheep. So, the first one is directly below us there. So, he's going to start following us now. Head directly to the right. That's where we found our first... Uh, Victimized sheep, uh, just regular sheep. We didn't touch him. No, no, that's wrong. Animal porn is wrong. That's why Pornhub got rid of it, isn't it? So many weirdos. Anyway, and then pack up to the top left. Interact with this third sheep, and then we can finally go back to mo mo mo. So, and this is another big mechanic of the game. We don't have a map piece, but we can actually make another one. And the way to do this, we basically now need to get all the mushrooms uh, facing towards the center of the square that we just left a hole in, as you can see there. And what that'll do then is basically create this fifth piece for us, or a new map piece, which is where the other sheep will be hiding. So a lot of that does happen throughout the game. So obviously just to be aware, so just in case you think, crap, what the hell have I done wrong? Literally, just keep watching the video, and obviously I'll be telling you what to do anyway. So, all the mushrooms towards the center. And it is, like I said, very... There are times where you think, I've literally just done that, but... There's little things where you've got to put towards the center, otherwise it won't work. Certain map pieces won't work unless you change it one way or the other, etc. So, obviously, just be aware in case something does or does not work. So, thank you, Mo. Again, literally just met you, but, um, oh. So you just gone back to sleep then. Well, so to speak to the sheep on the left, he's actually going to poop out a map piece for us now. And Carl's going to pick that up with the hands. No problem. Just all types of brown stuff on it. Hey, that's fine. We're in a, this is a d different era now. We can pick up poopy things with no problem. So we've got, obviously, the only map piece was the only one that we're going to pick up. And... Now we've got a message from our granny. So if she knows where she is, why doesn't she just come and get us? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, up your guts, granny. We'll find you. So up north again, and it's going to reveal this new path once more. Uh, these first few chapters, I tell you what, just really... Uh, they were absolutely lovely. Make sure to grab this map piece right here, by the way. But the music and everything in this game, the, the way it's set up, is just absolutely brilliant, and it was really nice. So on the map, then get the map piece from the f uh, from the first side to the left, and then get the next piece with the mushrooms just up above as well as you can see there. And there's going to be a new map piece for us. Put it underneath, and that'll reveal another map piece, which we can go. It's the bridge. So basically what that's going to do, we're going to go over this bridge and there's going to be, you guessed it, another map piece for us to pick up and a guy to chat to. You don't have to chat to him, but it's always worth uh, checking out what the hell their story is.
So keep heading up north for the time being. We are actually going to be using the map once again. You know, as we'll probably do a lot throughout this game, since that is the whole mechanic and reasoning of the game. And there we go. So get out your new, uh, get the one from the left, put it on the right, then you whip out your new map piece, sorry. And that will create a little hut for us. That is Momo Mo's house. So head actually into your map and what you'll need to do is just put it from the left up to the top and that is how we can actually go in. That actually did confuse the crap out of me for a couple of minutes first because I was trying to get in and she was like, yes, it it's a doorway we can go through. And I was like, why isn't it working? But yes, when we're inside places, we can actually still use the map to change it around as well. So that's just something else to be aware of, as if you didn't have anything else to be aware of. So once again we're going to be making another little path. So grab the left side hut and move it closer to you just once. Um, grab the sort of path with the curve in it and then we also need to grab a straight bit of path as well. The one with the forest on it. Not sure if it makes too much of a difference but you know I think it probably does that's the reason I grabbed it. So. Yeah, make sure to grab that one. And then all we need to do then is uh, to the left. There's a little boy to the left. We're going to speak to him and then a new piece will appear on our map. Uncle Ganja! <laughs> I bet a lot of people would love a forest that smells like Uncle Ganja. Ugh. Wouldn't we just? Anyway, now there's a new little sort of lake that appears by it. So go ahead and talk to Big Mama Chungus right here. Papa Chungus even. So what Big Papa Chung has done has actually given us a leaf which Mo Mo Mo's father needs. So that's where we're heading now. So just go back down, uh, you know, try not to walk into a, a dirt pile, which you could easily get across anyway in real life. Uh, go ahead, speak to... Um, man, I don't even know what the hell he looks like. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something. But speak to him and then we're going to have like this little sort of cutscene where a nice festival happens. And everyone's going to get off their nuts. The forest does smell like Uncle Ganja, so I bet there's plenty of that about. But everyone has a good time. You can actually interact as well. Just keep smashing the A button. Or you can go along with the tune or anything. But it's uh, it's nice. It's it's actually really nice. I, I've, lots of you know, lots of little scenes like this in the game. And it's really kind of heartwarming. And especially as we're sort of... As the time we're recording coming to the end of 2020, going into 2021 by the time this is on YouTube. Uh, but it's nice, kind of feels like the end of a crappy year. But we are coming up to our first missable achievement now. So, Papa's on his way, so you head out, but before going anywhere, go to the right. And you can just see this little plant on its own. Just keep clapping with it, interacting with it, pressing the A button. The red, This red flower will appear, and that will unlock the ground of applause achievement. So just make sure to get that before you head on. There is chapter select, by the way. As soon as the game ends, you can chapter select to get to any point that you want through the chapter. So if you do miss anything, you can easily go back to it. But obviously it's nice if we just get everything out of the way, isn't it? So, once that is done and we're all resting from our ganja hangover, get the hut and put it on the left. Get the bridge now and then put that next to the water. 
And basically, we are coming up to the end of the chapter now. So welcome to chapter 3 then. So we completed chapter 2, got the missable achievement from chapter 2. Uh, make sure to pick up this bit of corn or something right here. And then go into the trees to follow the beams of sound with an owl with a shower cap on his head for some reason. He's going to draw us a circle. That's basically a clue of how we need to draw the map. Um, so do we see that ghost flower again I wonder? Who, who knows? What a mystery. It's not really what we're after, we're after our granny. So we're going to basically head to the very rightmost square. After putting it on the very right side. And then it's easy enough just to draw a circle. That's all we've got to do for the time being. It's going to reveal Homeless Dan. That's not his name, but he thinks he's an owl. Uh, his name's actually Cherb, but Homeless Dan seems more preferable. Uh, he's going to give us a key. For some reason, again, this kind of happens a lot through the game. Would that really happen? Girl comes up to you and you go, hey, have a key, hun. Do what you want with it. <laughs> what the hell? But of course, this is a game. This isn't real life. Thank God, because real life kind of sucks. Ayeth. So we'll put the river in kind of an EastEnders sort of squiggly line shape or, or something or whatever. Put the campfire at the sort of top left. Uh, the problem is, of course, you need to get over the water, and you can't. So, obviously, what you need to do is obviously just swing the uh, puzzle piece that you're on. Literally, just press the right bumper or left bumper a few times. I actually end up, for some reason, not doing that and making things more complicated, <laughs> for whatever reason. Uh, but, yeah, swing it around a few times, and you should actually get there with no problems. Again, apologies that I just made a witch's tit out of this one. There we go, that'll do it. As long as we can get there, <laughs> then we are good. But literally, like I said, all you needed to do was just press left bumper, right bumper a few times until you swing around to the other side. So, yeah. Anyway, once we're here, pick up the puzzle piece, or the two puzzle pieces. And we've got um, Homeless Dan the second and third there. And they've got a sort of crow hat on, and they look a bit shifty, to be honest. But with the two new puzzle pieces, just put them north of where you are. Now this part can potentially get confusing, but it is actually quite easy. So, what you'll need to do, there's basically, there's going to be, as you can see, a little question mark that comes up, and there's these little sort of, it's like a little bow or something on a tree. Now that is all you've got to follow, but it will be random for everyone in every game, so it won't be exactly the same. So you just need to move the piece up to wherever you've gone. So as you can see, there's no bow on that tree but I decide to go left anyway but it doesn't actually get me any further the question mark basically means whoa I've, I've just taken a wrong turn 
So that's it for this little easy part then. So you'll know you're going in the right direction when you see these little music notes appear at the top of your head. So it's just a case of looking where the bow's going, put the map piece to whichever direction it is, and drop down. We're actually going to see the owl with a shower cap on and homeless Dan right here. Um, it's not really a trick. Basically, we're just going to be following them. So you'll put the map piece at the top of where you are, and then again, keep on following the bows. So again, it can also be random for people in terms of how quick or how long it takes you to get it. For me, it seemed to take quite a while to get there. But as soon as Carto says, question mark, then that's where the map pieces are. Like I said, it's random for you, but it's not, you know, overly difficult. So you will get the same map pieces eventually. With a new map piece, with what sort of looks like a fountain, open it up, head down, grab the other two map pieces right here. And then what we need to do with that, sort of head up past Yogi Bear and Friend, just sort of up to the next one. And then the two new map pieces that we've got, we're going to be using the second one of the two. Uh, I think they are pretty much the exact same anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so sort of connect that onto the right of the fountain piece, and then with that one, uh, just sort of move that to the side. Basically, we what we need to be doing is getting Yogi Bear and the homeless guy to meet up. So, so, there we go. Just ignore that one for now then. Uh, put that to the side and then just carry on. And then go up. And now, what we can do is actually put that map piece back, head up, and then he as soon as you see the music notes, just head back down. And that is where these boys are like, Hey, bro, I ain't seen you for a while. Hey, what's going on? How's the penis size doing? Small? Me too. See you later. And away they go until they see each other the next time to compare testicle sizes or whatever. Depends really how long they've been in the woods. So move the top map to the right and then head over to it. And you're going to see these music notes again, or you should. And then that, the one that we were just on on the left, move it upwards. And then we should, s now, sh ugh, now we should see <laughs> two map pieces. So this one can get potentially, you know, quite confusing on your own. But hopefully I've explained it and shown it sort of well enough that it, that you can just uh, do it with no problems and that it's not that confusing. So, next, once again, we're going to be doing a little map rearranging. Get the new piece out, which is the very first one, which is on the left. And then put it on top of the sort of piece which looks like the fountain. And then, sorry, I'm, I'm going to move these two, next two over because we don't actually need them for now. Put that one on top of the left one, and then just move that one to the left, and then we're actually able to go and see the guys at the fire camp. Again, not comparing testicle sizes. Not just yet, anyway, because they've only just bumped into each other, and that would be awkward. Like, you know when you see someone again at the shopping, when you go and shopping, and you have a chat, and then you keep bumping into them in every aisle? Yeah, it's just awkward. So make sure to pick up the two new map pieces then, and what we're basically doing is looking out for another map piece, but it's just all in forest. So again, this bit can be random and it can get confusing, but just keep following the notes. As soon as you see the musical notes on screen, that means you are heading in the right direction. So now you can just uh, put the forest the other side. Again, I'm not moving these buggers far enough, so we'll <laughs> just move them. So you'll know you're heading in the right direction with the music notes. If Cardo has a question mark on her head, remember that means that you're not heading in the right direction. So there you go. That's just happened again, which means we're going to be sort of heading to the right, more towards the right now. So again, open up the map, put the left side, left hand forest on the right side. Eventually, we're going to do that. <laughs> and then it should now spawn me a map piece. I'm not sure if that bit is totally random. Hopefully it is exactly the same, so you can just follow along on screen. But again, just keep following the musical notes anyway, and you will get there. 
We so get out your new map piece again. Remember to press the X button to obviously go down. And then use the one with the little path again. Looks like a little worm wiener. Um, put it on the right of where you are. And there's going to be another map piece and a letter from Granny. So again, Granny knows where we are, but she's not actually come to pick us up. So screw you, Granny. So next, we're going to be making new little dirt tracks or a new little dirt path. We're going to be going inside a tree, lubing up and jumping in, tree diving for the new year. Yes. So put the obvious path down. So we're sort of snaking down and there is going to be a tree, like I said, that we need to go into. Again, while we're in that tree, we will be, as is basically the norm in the game, be messing around with the map. So luckily it's not too complicated, but there are many paths that we can forge. So grab the one from the left, turn it around once and put it beneath you. And then the one from the right, turn it down. So it's sort of like, kind of looking like a half a cloud, if that's a thing. And then just head all the way down. Now there are items that we are actually going to be grabbing. So it can be quite dark in here, but grab the obvious looking caterpillar first. <laughs> Get your map back out. And turn the piece to the left of you. Just turn that around twice. Uh, so that it's making another path for us to go down. Alright, so once you get to the bottom here, just interact with it. And there we go. So it's kind of like the... I don't know, it kind of looks like a weird thing. But make sure to interact with it before we whip open our map. And the one to the right of us. Turn it around so we are on the exit with the hole as you can probably see my explanations are pretty useless sorry but uh, turn it around so we've got the path towards the hole the sinkhole the stink hole whatever hole you want to call it any hole's a goal and this is our goal so stick your head through the hole in the goal and then get out of there and now as we can see homeless dan and the owl with the shower cap on his head is back So once you've had a nice conversation with them, uh, they're going to disappear into the tree and that's exactly where we are going. Um, there are three more pieces of the map that we've now got. Now again, I'm not, <laughs> not going to explain exactly every map piece and how it goes, so just follow along on screen sort of as carefully as you can and then we should all be golden nuggets, huh? Now hopefully, like I said, with me being sort of slow doing this, hopefully you can just sort of come along with me rather than me smashing through it and then you go, you stupid dick, what you doing? You're going too fast, etc, etc. So anyway, once you have the map exactly like I just did, uh, keep walking down and now we can actually break this boulder by clapping it. Well done, Caterpillar. We, we, it's like one of those clapping lamps, except it's a clapping stone. We are pretty legendary, I'd say. Like that is unbelievable strength. So this is an easier part of the map piece. All we're doing is sticking our head through the hole and seeing what's on the other side. Hopefully it's not too smelly, sort of fishy smell. Nope, it's just wood smell, thank God. 
that it is clean. Right, so this now is a little bit of a puzzle. And you see all these markings of what we're on right now. We actually need to make that into a sort of weird monster looking thing. So if you'd rather not see me doing this, if you just go ahead and skip to 37 minutes dead on, then you can actually see the finished product and just go from there if you want to. The choice is yours. So it kind of looks like the inception of a dead, weird lizard looking kind of thing. But who appears in the middle of it? You wouldn't believe it. It is fr it's only friggin' Santa Claus. Santa Claus must have got lost going back to the North Pole or something because he is looking rough. Uh, trapped in the middle of the woods. So <laughs> speak to Santa right here. <laughs> Hi, Noel. And uh, get ready for quite a bit of dialogue conversation here. So just, again, keep smashing the A button to blast through it. So yeah, I mean, I did say that was a lot of dialogue conversation. So just go ahead, say goodbye to the other messengers, old homeless Dan and uh, Yogi Bear and the rest of them. And that will actually end chapter three.
So the potential confusingness of wooden areas is now done. Ignore the pause, didn't mean to pause, don't know why I paused. So head through and now that's it, that's chapter 3 done. Now, like I said earlier, chapters 4, 6, 8 and 10 at the very beginning will all have a chalet in them. Uh, it's basically like a library sort of thing and we've got to read a shit ton of books. Now, it's they're always not, they're not always just plain and obvious. Apart from the ones that are plain and obvious with the ones that have got bright lights coming out of them. Um, so yeah, you'll see but you'll see lights coming out of bookcases, but not every bookcase will have that light coming out of them. So I mean if you wanted to, you could just blast through every single one, to be very sure. But the book that we're standing by right now, sometimes you'll read it once, go and do your stuff, and you have to make sure to read it again. So every time you do your stuff upstairs, come back down, make sure to read it again if it's glowing light. A lot of people do tend to miss that one. And of course we can, like we always do, we can move the map pieces as well. So just, you know, be very careful with what you're doing. So obviously we've got the first two bookcases on the right and the left here. And then we're going to be moving a map piece. So just be very careful and just, again, copy exactly what I do. Don't even blink through this section, just in case <laughs> you miss something. So when we have moved that map piece, obviously we'll have access to more rooms. Um, so, like you know, like I said, if you want to just keep smashing it around and having a look around anyway, that should be fine. But literally, just as long as you follow exactly what I'm doing in the video, you genuinely should have no problems doing it. Another potential confusing bit, you see that bookcase which has a little bit of glow out on it? Just means that we need to pick up an item and they were the boots by the desk there. So uh, just don't get confused with that, that one is all. But we are actually now coming to the end. So again if you want to have a look through the rooms and just make sure you haven't missed anything, that should be fine. But this is important. So this is the entrance. Remember to read that book again, the same book that we read when we first came in. So. It won't happen on every chapter, but for this chapter especially, you have to read that book as you enter and as we exit. So that is very important to do that, because like I said, that is one that can, that people do actually tend to miss. So, head to the left, we're going to return back to Zgrassland. Of course, like I said, we got chapter select anyway at the end of the game, so if you do end up missing one, you can just blast through it uh, very easily anyway. So, uh, hello Wreck-It Ralph. Because you do look a bit Wreck-It Ralphish, to be honest. So I have a little conversation with him. Um, basically, what uh, what this chapter consists of is us uh, having a look for somewhere sandy. Now, as you can see, my we need to find Mo. So get Mo. I'm sort of bring him up, sort of as close to you as you can. He's in the uh, with a bunch of mushrooms right there. 
But as you can see, my map is completely sort of randomly sort of broken up. Which, I'm not sure if it's going to happen. It could happen the same for you. you. Yours might look like mine, or yours might actually be a bit more together. But after when... After I speak to Mo right here, sleeping again, the lazy ass bastard, I'm so jealous. So freaking jealous. Uh, but what I'm actually going to do, and to be honest, I highly advise you to do it as well, is we're going to put the map a bit more close together so we've got basically one path. So we're not just pissing around with moving map pieces all the time. We're just going to put the map piece all together. Um, so again, I do. you don't have to, but I do advise you to do that. So... I do take a couple of minutes here just to sort of have a look together so we're not wandering up and down and all the freaking hell around. Uh, yeah, but if you want to see exactly how I've done it, then just head to 47 minutes dead on. And then you can see exactly what the map is like and then you can do it the same or sort of similar to me. Just so you can keep up with me and what I'm doing through the video. Because obviously if you've got certain map pieces in the wrong place or whatever it may look a bit confusing and you may think you son of a bitch where am i etc etc So we are back and as you can see everything is more closely knit together, a bit more condensed so we don't have to go as far as etc. So talk to these four dudes on the right. Now big, big, big warning about, about a glitch that can happen. So our objective is to basically find three plants to help Mo sleep. For some reason even though he's always sleeping. There we go. But if you actually go and grab all of the three plants together and then bring them to him, Kato doesn't actually place them down, she does like a stinking, annoying dance around him. Thus, you have to restart the checkpoint and do it again. Now, it took me around an hour to finally figure out how to get past it. So, hopefully, if you do the exact same as I do in the video, you'll get past that glitch no problem. So, first of all, grab... There we go, as you can see, grab a plain bit of water, put it on to the left-hand side, and a new map piece will open. And that is exactly where we're going to be heading. Um... Sort of up to the top left hand corner there. Now what was annoying was I was grabbing this particular plant last. So I was grabbing them all together, didn't work. Then I grabbed them one by one and I was grabbing this river plant last and it still wasn't working. So I thought as I was starting to slightly lose my cool a little bit, <laughs> I thought you can suck my big, tiny little testicles. I'm going to grab this friggin' river plant thing first. And that's how it seemed to do it. So, if you do it in this particular order, and also when we get to Mo, it's probably worth um, going on the map piece, swinging him around a couple of times, doing a bit of map movements as well. Again, I'm not sure if it makes a difference, but it seemed to work. So, so grab the river plant first then, move the map a bit, about a bit, and then... Put it down so there we go happy days that's the first one done and obviously if you hadn't noticed the way to get these plants is we actually need to now make a circle in the middle of the path right here so that's what I, uh, what we're exactly going to do once you do that a new map piece arrives and that is exactly where the piece of crap plant is what we need so you make like a sort of half circle and then the fourth one appears. So that's the dandelions or whatever the hell they are called in the middle. So again, grab them, bring them to Mo. And again, once you get to Mo, have a look at the map and then swing them around a couple of times. Move the map piece around and then move it back um, for it to work. So, you know, obviously, like I said, it's not a guarantee. I might have finally just got lucky with this run. A friggin' hour in, by the way. Um, <laughs> but hopefully, like I said, if you just do exactly the way I do it, so you collect the river plant first, uh, this plant second, and then the next one last. And it's all to do with these little bits of, as you can see, these little bits of uh, cornflower, or whatever the hell they are called. You need to put them all towards the center, and then the fourth map piece appears. And that plant is by the hippie woman who hasn't appeared since chapter one.
So we've got that. We're going to head back to Mo. And uh, yeah, so like I said, this time it works for me. Doing what I've done on screen worked for me. So hopefully if you've copied what I've done as well, then it should work for you too. And you've avoided the glitch. And basically the glitch is when you speak to Mo, um, she starts sort of doing a little walk and dance around him. And then she never puts the plant down. So that's why it is a bit of a pain in the butt snatch, to be honest. But like I said, hopefully we're good to go. Head through the open hole and we're going to see what's on the other side. Hopefully no fish in that hole. Hmm, nice. But we are going to head through, finish chapter four and head on to the desert level now. And here we are. Welcome to the desert. I hope you're not thirsty because, you know, desert, thirsty stuff. Yeah. Anyway, to the left, and as we can see, we're going to get two map pieces just by these people right here. So then we're going to have a conversation with just the both of them as well. And once we're done yammering on with our emojis, what we're actually going to be doing is looking for a quick cactus. We're going to get a missable achievement, and that is literally just for interacting with a cactus five times. So... Do that, you're going to have pretty numb hands, I expect, by the end of it, but you'll get an achievement. So, achievement for hands, I'll take that any day of the week, thanking you. So, speak to uh, Grandma in the tent, if you would like. Uh, I don't think it's really necessary, but just do it anyway, just to be on the safe side. Now, remember in Chapter 3, where we had to go to the forest, we had two map pieces, um... And we were basically following like this path to get a map. Yes, this is exactly the same sort of thing, except it's with the desert this time. So uh, press X and press then press A to get your new map pieces up. And it will be the exact same thing now. So again, it's going to be just as random on everyone's gameplay as it will be for, well, everyone. <laughs> but you're going to obviously see the musical notes. And that's when you know you're going in the right direction. So, it's a case then of moving the piece from the right to your left, or, or whichever direction that you go in. As long as the music note are there, that, once again, is the correct direction that you are going. So, this should be it for me at least. That we now find our two map pieces. Now you're going to see when we go onto the map, you're going to see a bit of white sand and a bit of orange sand. Now it's kind of just like, you know, forest of water, where orange can only connect to orange, white sand can only connect to white. F again, fairly obvious, but that is how it is. So we're going to place both the map pieces, the one with the little tent area as well. So put that above the white, and that is where we're going to be heading next and talking to a few more people. But before we do that, we are going to open up a treasure chest. Now, you think we could just find a quick key and open it, but it wants us to do a puzzle. But what I've kindly done is I've actually put the uh, directions at the top there. So it'll be right bumper, left bumper, left bumper, right bumper, right bumper, right bumper, left bumper, left bumper, left bumper, right bumper, and that will open it up. Now what I actually don't get in video games is there's a whole bunch of treasure and you pick up sort of one coin and then leave. Like I would be stuff in my pockets even if it slows me down and makes me more thirsty. Bruh, you are rich, come on! There's just a whole lot of treasure sitting there waiting to be seen. <laughs> anyway, we are going to move on. I suppose our main treasure is Granny. So when we head back to the left, you're going to see these footprints now. And now this is, I believe, another random part. So again, it may be potentially different for you. But it is exactly the same again as it was in uh, Chapter 3 in the Woods. So all you need to do really, and I'm pretty sure, is just press the left bumper to turn it around once. And that will then put the footsteps in the right direction. So again, and it'll be the same. You see the music notes, you're going in the right direction. Um, if the footprints are going in a different way, like there, or there is none. <laughs> um, obviously, it comes up with a question mark. So you've got to basically put the map piece in the at, at the same point where the footprints are going. As long as they're pointing basically forwards, then you are golden nuggets, my friends.
So, like I said, it'll either take a long time or no time at all. It's all random, but the uh, puzzle is fairly simple. So, we've got a new puzzle piece. If you're kind of hard of seeing, it kind of looks like a bus stop, but it is just a coconut tree. Uh, <laughs> and we will be grabbing a coconut from there, so we're going to condense everything together, and we are basically going to head towards that tree next. Now this is important, there are three trees and the one we need to actually interact with is the one in the middle. You see the one with the coconut on? So make sure to interact with the middle tree to grab the coconut and then grab the map piece. I actually end up missing the coconut here and I come back for it a little bit later on. But if you do obviously want to save a little bit of time. The middle tree, you can see it right there, right in front of your eyes right now is the coconut. So grab it! Because for some reason I didn't because I am stupid. But like I said, we do come back for it later on anyway, so if you do end up missing it, it's literally no problem at all. So, new map piece, put that at the bottom. And now we've got now we've got to look for a captain. Have you noticed? We're meeting all these random people and they're giving us jobs. And I actually went to shake it and then walk away. What am I doing? I am stupid. So, this is another little puzzle, and this one... If you don't know what you're doing, it can take a while to figure out. So you see these little bits of um, clusters of cacti right there. We need to be pointing... There's three, obviously, pieces on the map. We need to be pointing these uh, towards the centre. And then that'll make another map piece appear. So if you don't know what you're doing, that this bit can take a bloody long time. So see wherever these uh, little clusters of cacti are. And then obviously just turn them around so they all point towards the center and that will get the next map piece going. What a pain in the ass that was to figure out though. <laughs> Thanks. So we have got there eventually and also like I said by the way what I was saying was we're going to all these different places and these people are giving us jobs like you wouldn't see a little girl coming through in your town by the way speak to the camel and have a look at the um, sort of weird writing on the stone just above the camel there um, but if you see a little girl come through your town and she's a bit lost and she's like oh I've lost my nan you ain't gonna go, ah, oh, really sorry to hear that. Should we look for her? No, I'll give you a couple of jobs first, and then, well, hope you find her, because I ain't doing nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't work like that, really, does it? Spank you very much. So this is basically a puzzle uh, just like we've done with the cactus, but this time it is with rock formation. So we're gonna move these sort of white sandy bits out of the way now. And you actually need to make these sort of rock formations, the map pieces with a sort of uh, square in the center there because that's where the fourth map piece will appear. So you have to do it this way. And again, it's just exactly the same. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you need to just put the rock formations in the center of the map. Now obviously you can't actually see them on the map, which is a pain in the nutsack again. Uh, but it is easy enough. So once you get them all pointing to the center, you can just walk down and you can see 
sort of where the rock formation lies. It, it's easy enough once you know what you're doing, but it is actually knowing what you're doing, which can take a little while. And by God, I yammer on a bit, don't I? Sorry, sorry, guys. So by the grace of God and all that is miracle, the little girl that's come through the desert for the first time has found the captain while they all stay by the tents going, oh my God, I wonder where the captain is. Kind of like, we're all out of ideas and we haven't done anything. You know, Flanders dad kind of thing. There we go. But of course she needs help. She needs a bit of water. So that is where the next bit's gonna come in. And which is why we've actually got to go back to get the coconut. So she gives us a new map piece and then we are going to place that down. And again, any time I sort of uh, move a map to make it look a bit better or a bit more condensed just I, I highly advise you to do what I do as it makes it a whole lot easier without you potentially getting confused or having to run away a lot of places so interact with the camel that gets us the rope now normally we'd have the coconut so you then interact with it twice the coconut would go down we get some water and take it to the captain but because I am captain douche of captain douchery of the SS douchebag um, we've got to go back, so it's only a bit more of a pain in the ass having to go back, but like I said, it's literally a case of just moving the map piece over to where you are, grabbing the coconut, and then that is all good. But apologies for sort of wasting your time a little bit with that. <laughs> So, I mean, I obviously don't do it with every single map, but I kind of just like to rearrange it just to sort of how it was. So, again, it just makes life a whole lot easier for us. It may be a bit of a pain in the ass having to do it for a minute or two, but honestly, it will just make the game and our life a lot easier instead of um, wondering what the hell's going on and why you haven't done something that I've done or potentially vice versa. <laughs> So finally drop that stinking ass coconut in, grab that stinking ass water, and then chuck it to the stinking ass captain. Okay, I'm just angry that it took me a lot longer to figure out where the coconut was than I admit to re uh, realize to admit, sorry. But that's all she needed, look. A uh, bit of water, but she's now good. Now there's basically going to be a big puzzle coming up soon. What we need to do now is catch a little rat for her for some reason. I don't know why she needs a rat, but it's what we're going to be grabbing. So arrange the two orange um, sandy map pieces to the sort of uh, more towards the left, bottom of the left there. Now it may not happen the first time, 
Uh, so don't worry if it hasn't. Just keep going back to where the captain was and coming back down. Basically, at some point, you're going to see this little rat thing uh, zooming across. As soon as you do, open up the map. And as you can see on the right-hand side, there's like a little well or something that has appeared. Or something weird has appeared. So that's where we're going to be heading. So like I said, if it doesn't happen the first or second time, just keep going back to the captain. Going back down until the sort of sandy... Uh, sandy scene, the wind sand scene starts, and then eventually you should get this rack on along. It'll bump into this, which uh, <laughs> unlucky son, dizzy rat with a fluffy tummy. Kind of, is that my ex? Yeah, no. Anyway, yeah, kind of looks like. No, not really. I don't really make love to physical rats. Make sure to pick up the item that the rat bumped into. Oh man, shut up, shut up. And then head back to the captains. <laughs> so, we've... <laughs> I'm losing my head. But she's going to head up onto the rocks. And now we've got to do a little puzzle <clears throat> with the map pieces. Now, again, I've tried going sort of as slow as I can. So, all you've got to do is just pick the exact same map pieces that I do. And put them into where the white bits are on the map. So, it can be quite tricky to see because it's very bloody bright and it is a bit of a pain in the ass but just follow along exactly with what I put and where I put them and hopefully you shouldn't have any issues at all I don't know who decided to make it that bright though But once you have done it correctly, a new map piece will appear for us. This sandy scene will start and for some reason float down a couple of rocks right by us. Thank you for that as well. So yeah, that was one of the more pain in the asses one just because it's quite tricky to see. But that is exactly what it looks like. So if you want to pause the video now and just have a look, um, then it's obviously but you're more than welcome to do that. Just so you know exactly what pieces go where. But for now, what we're going to do is, with these sort of watery edges on all of the white sandy bits, just put them, you can put them in literally any location, as long as they all fit onto the water scene, and chapter 5 is basically coming to an end. So to actually end the chapter, what we need to do now is basically go to both of the tents and just talk to them. And obviously we do that. Uh, the way we do it is obviously just wherever the hell we are. We just need to connect it up to one of the white sandy beaches. So again, just do, do what I do. And baby, we are good. And then once we've spoken to everyone, we are out of here. And then we can get a drink, and then we can stop doing random jobs. Oh, wait, actually, we've still got four more chapters of doing random jobs, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, lazy bastards. 
So, once again then, it's only a little tiny bit of map rearranging, but that is what I am going to do. Um, so we are on to chapter 6 now, and we will be going towards the chalet. So again, like I said, just be very, very careful. Way, Shaggy Nan, we found you again. Oh, how's your Nan, Shaggy? Did you shag? Yep, happy days. Ah, look, that's that's cute. Anyway, so <laughs> we found your Nan. Not your Nan, Shaggy Nan. Not anyone's Nan, Shaggy Nan. Oh, Shaggy Nan. But we have found her. Now, there is one bit which, again, people do tend to miss out. When we start going through all the books and everything, we need to speak to her again. So we have to speak to her again. I'll let you know at the same uh, at the point that we need to speak to her. Otherwise, again, it's just a case of keep looking at my video and then just keep uh, reading the exact same things that I do and just make sure to do it before you move on. So this is the part that we need to speak to Cheyenne again. So this is important and this is one that a lot of people do tend to miss. So when we speak to her, then the, when we go to exit, the book, the cartography book lights up again so we can read it. If you haven't spoken to her again, it won't light up and you will miss the achievement at the end of the game. So very, very important to speak to her here. So there we go, now we can exit, and I only haven't spoken through these parts because I, I think it's probably better if you concentrate without me yammering on. So, the little cartographer, again, if you've spoken to Shinan, that will light up. If you didn't speak to her, this won't light up. So if you haven't already, make sure to do it before you leave. Speak to Shinan, then the book lights up, and then we are pretty much good to go now. So we're gonna head up, and we're gonna go through the stink hole, to the next part of the chapter. So once we've spoken to the fox and the other messenger guy, uh, basically, again, this could potentially be random for you in terms of the map may look completely different. So. 
I am going to spend about a minute or two in just a moment, again, completely rearranging it all so that it makes it easier for us if you want to follow along. But for now, you have a look at these sort of, uh, these sort of four square piece corner is. Now, that's where we're going to be going first. Sort of big. You can't really miss it, but we're going to be speaking to this, I don't know, kind of looks like a evil French artist or something. <laughs> So when we had done talking, he just let us know where a map piece is. So of course he said northwest, or northeast, sorry. So it's going to be in the top right-hand corner. But I'm not sure if it's going to be different or random for everyone in the game. So, like I said, there's not really a lot of places to go. So even if he does say like southwest or southeast, it's just bottom left or bottom right. But I think it'll always be sort of in the tree areas. But just make sure to grab the new map piece before we head on. So this is... Once again is the point where I'm just going to rearrange uh, the, not the entire map, but most of the map. Just so once again we have a bit of condensicity. That's really not a word. But <laughs> where everything's a bit close together and we've just got one path to follow. Instead of pissing around with different little map pieces a bit later on. So this takes me around two minutes to do, but if you want, if you'd prefer to just see the finished product and go from there, head to one minute at one, oh, one minute, one hour, 19 minutes, 15 seconds. That's to see the finished product, and that's where we're actually going to get the next miserable achievement, Quartet. Right, so this is basically the rest of the path that's going to help us now for the rest of the chapter. But we're just going to split it back off because we are going to be getting another achievement. So grab the very top piece there, the kind of wiener penis looking path in the forest. So grab that piece first. Then grab the one with the sort of water fountain and put it just underneath. Next, we're going to be grabbing the piece with the fire on it, the little campfire. It's a pretty obvious piece. It's the only one with a campfire on it. So go ahead, turn that around once, and then we're going to leave that on the top right corner. And then the last one is the path with a sort of stone or tree stump, whatever it is. You'll hear that little tone. And before we continue, we're doing this for a reason, but before we continue, make sure to actually put yourself on the piece so you can get over to that little part we just made. Kind of makes sense now, but obviously I messed that one up, so... <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, okay, all right, we got there in the end, finally. Um, so yeah, try and not to do what I did. Apologies about that, but <laughs> try to not to do what I did. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so just make sure you're on that piece before you get it over. So what we're doing, basically on the main map, there are four birds in the corner. Now, when you get these four pieces together, these four birds join up. They can be a, in a random part of the jungle or this little area, but once you find them, they'll sing a little song and you will unlock the quartet achievement. But it only works if you put those four pieces together. Once we're done, we're gonna then put those uh, same pieces of map back in the original place. Again, just so it's a lot easier for all of us to follow. But of course, what would be helpful is if I actually knew what to do. Uh, <laughs> so there we go. We put it back and we're just heading now sort of down and to the left a bit until we find uh, Cherbo or Cherba or whatever his bloody name is. The homeless looking guy in the pajamas. So he'll always be in this spot. So don't worry about that. Hooty Tooty or oh, Cherb, sorry. No Cherbo. Cherbo man. So we've got a new piece of map, and apparently we've got to look for a screaming tree. Man, this just keeps getting weirder, doesn't it? So grab the uh, piece with a sort of wiener-looking path. The, the one with the screaming tree. You can just see it. Put it next to the left of us. Put the campfire to the right, and then grab the um, straight path. Sort of with the green, both uh, shades of green there. And that should give us a path up to the campfire to speak to Santa Claus. Man, Santa Claus and Yogi Bear teaming up really look lost at the minute. But now we are in the sort of jungle. Now, basically, again, the map could be all sorted for you or like it was for me, uh, it wasn't sorted at all. So apologies for this edit. It took me quite a while to figure it out. But all we're looking for is the path that we can go up with the hole that we can jump into, as you can see there. So apologies if it is a little bit confusing, but... Just look for the same path, the one with the hole on, that we can jump through. Now this is going to be another easy one, but it's a, another puzzle. Uh, basically we have to light up a whole bunch of torches. So again, just copy exactly what I do. Obviously as you've been doing through the game so far. <laughs> Otherwise you wouldn't got this far so far. Hmm? And what we're doing then, grabbing the torch and then heading back to the left. So what the puzzle entails is we need... Uh, a, obviously light up torches on your way but we need to be lighting up all the torches on the way and then putting them in order so one two three four and then after you put them all in an order the fifth map piece will appear so obviously what we need to do is put the map pieces in a particular order and then lighting up the torches Ew. I hope I just didn't over explain that Gotta light them all, light them on. So, once we have lighted them all, we're going to do a little bit of map switching now. A little bit of rearranging the underwear, as it were. So 
So once you have put them in the exact same order, shape and weight and form that I have, like right here, so it'll be one, two, three, four, put your last torch on, open your map up, and there will be the fifth one. So that is how it goes. So it's one, two, three, four, five. That is how easy the puzzle is. But of course, it's always maybe potentially a bit confusing with uh, what ways you need to actually move the map pieces. But once with it, we're going to go for our sticky hole situation. And that is actually going to end chapter six. So now we are getting on to... Honestly, this was my favourite chapter throughout the, the whole game. I much preferred this. I don't know why this was just a really nice one to go through. Probably because for people living in a volcano... Their lives are quite luxurious. I'll give them that. So there's absolutely nothing in here. You don't actually have to interact with them. We can just go ahead and climb up the ladder. And we are going to meet the... Uh, probably the friendliest dude in the whole game. And he looks so happy as well. I would as well, mind. It looks like a pretty banging place to live. We are so honored. We are usually showed up during the Viv pushed it. Viv, Viv, Viv. Viv, 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 huh? So, let's go and grab that map piece. That's going to help us out, funnily enough, as most map pieces have been doing. Uh, stick it on at the top. And then just change the middle one, uh, fling that one up, and then we can actually jump down the ladder to see another quite friendly face who wants us to join dinner. I mean, to be fair, the strangers in this game are very, very friendly. Normally in real life you get arrested for it, but hey, it's a video game, so we're happy with that. One thing I do have a concern with, though, they, they sort of just leave us. We've never been here before, Hon. What are you doing bloody leaving me? Come with me. Anyway, we are going to jump on this geyser. That is going to... Um, minimal scoldings. Yeah, I can imagine. But interact with it. That's going to... Boosh us up. Boosh us up is a word I just made up. And we're going to get our next map piece. Very funnily enough... So once we put that the correct way, we can actually head down that ladder. And this is where she looks like the nicest mother in the world as well. Hey, come on, stay for dinner, please. Pfft, yes, please. I'm Chubbs, and I like it. And any stranger offers me food, I'm going to take it. Even if it leads to bad, bad situations. But hey, free meal. You, you do what you can for a free meal. Zoidberg. Anyway, you have to chat with her, and then we're going to head back up now. So once we're here, then, we're going to see, like, this goose or bird or whatever it is. It's going to start flying towards us now. Now, what it'll do is go over this vent and it'll start flying down. So we need to follow it, take your map out, and then put the next map piece down. So we basically sort of need it to keep going on this uh, vent. So it basically burns, dies, so we can have it. So get in front of it, and every time it's about to fly off the map... That is where you can uh, get the next map piece and put it in front of you. So, obviously, see where it's going. Go to the left this time. Make sure that the volcano is on the sort of leftmost side. Or, you know, sort of any side that you can put it, really. And after about three times, then, that'll burn up. And that is ours for dinner, mate. And again, you know, we're helping people out. This is through seven different places we've been. And we've been helping people out all the time. So, make sure to grab the goose or the pheasant or whatever and the map piece that was down here as well. If you want to change anything in this volcano, you actually have to go uh, climb back up the ladder and then change it, reverse it round. Can't actually do it inside for some reason. So get down. Talk to the mother again, and she's going to be like, Bro, fair play, you was, you was banging, bruv. You know what I mean? Ali G. And, well, what, do you, what else have you got to do but eat? And again, you can just keep bashing the A button 
to eat, eat, eat your ass off. No nap afterwards, because we got places to be. By the way, Christ almighty, doesn't the mother look angry eating this? Jesus, somebody pissed her at you. So then after dinner, uh, eating dinner with the angriest family, even though they are nice, they look very, very angry while eating that. We're going to head back up, get our new map piece, and we're going to place it uh, underneath the right-hand side one. We're basically going to put the guys uh, to the right, um, because we actually need to be going back underground. So switch it around so the geyser uh, is on the right-hand side. Then we're going to head back down, and we're going to... Go throw in a new path and climb up the next ladder. Oh my god, how comfy does that actually look? Those better rocks might not seem comfy, but oh, you can feel the relaxo rancho, bro. Uh, anyway, we're gonna head down the ladder and uh, ladder, head to the left and grab the map piece that is under here, and then we're gonna head back up. This is where the sort of everything just looks completely relaxo rancho. It looks awesome. Grab that new piece and uh, put it on top of you. To the left. And then we're going to head back under. And then obviously head up the new path that we just made. Obviously. You see where I'm going with this? It's been happening a lot through the game, you know? Once we're on top, make sure to grab the new map piece before we talk to our... Uh, weirdy little friend, I suppose. I don't know, she seems a bit too much for me. Hmm. I miss Shaggy Nan. But we will see our good friend Nan Nan later. Get the new map piece and then obviously turn it around. We're going to head back down to the ladder. And then it's basically on the top right of this little section is where we need to go next. So simply talk to this guy here. Brr, brr, mate, I'm friggin' sweating me tits off here. But I suppose if you're used to being in sort of uh, 200 degrees Celsius weather and volcan volcanic stuff, then you'd probably get used to it, wouldn't you? So, head into the rock just up above there, and we then we're going to talk to this guy who also says, brr, and he thinks, mate, I, I haven't got a nipple left, I'm sweating my tits off. And then we're just going to head down and go back up the ladder, and we're going to actually use the uh, guys now to get out of here. Geyser, sorry. And then what we're going to do is head back down the ladder. We're basically heading back to the lobby now to speak to the friendliest guy in Vivol World. So he's given us a carrot to give to his goat. I literally don't know why he just can't go himself, but I suppose he's got apparently guests to greet. So we'll head back down through where we ate dinner earlier on and then back up that ladder. It's like a game of bloody back and forth, man. So after giving this goat one carrot, he now trusts us enough to let us give him a ride anyway, or give us a ride anyway, so hey, I'm happy with that. Uh, head to the volcanic crater, if only I could give things a carrot to be able to ride them. No, wait, nah, that came out all wrong, didn't it? All wrong. Anyway, here we are at said volcanic crater, 
To actually get down, we need to actually speak with this lady right here. So go ahead and speak to her, and then you'll automatically go down. And again, this is what baffles me. They've had professionals doing this for years, but they go, Hi, little girl who's just come here. Looking for your grandma? Just nip down into the volcano for a minute and try not to die, but try and sort it out for us, because I don't want to die today. Oh, okay. Yeah, nice one. You goddamn dickholes. Anyway, this bit's easy. Literally, just flip the switches as she tells you. So, uh, flip the left one first, and then the right one. And literally, just the instructions are simple enough um, when you're using the wheel. So, she'll say, flip it uh, left a couple of times or right a couple of times. So, just do that. So, left twice, etc, etc. Oh, okay, awesome. So this is the day I die then, yep. Yeah? Right. Because you're selfish. Nice one. So, I'm pretty sure the lava can actually hurt you, but what you need to do is get in the middle of the room, and then you'll need to open up your map, and then very quickly tap the left or right bumper buttons as quick as you can, and that'll get the big flaming tornado the hell out of there. Look, and the... Hey, you can all fudge off, even you happy boy. Look at him. They're having a whale of a time yeah. And I nearly died. You are douche. So did you see that big um, sort of plus sign with the um, volcano basically in the middle? To get an achievement and to get another secret piece of the puzzle, what you need to do is actually click on that and then once again just click the right or left bumper very quickly as many times as you can. That's going to unlock an achievement. I don't do it yet. I do it just before we leave, but I'm letting you know now just in case you sort of get ahead of me at the end and end up missing it. I don't want you to miss it. So with that big four sort of big plus sign looking piece, right bumper or left bumper, quick as you can, and then that will give you the secret piece and the next achievement. So up the ladder, get the goat, we go into the lobby. In fact, it's here where the chapter is going to end and I'm going to get it now. So happy man's going to give us a letter, but again, before you go, whip out your map because, uh, and then just press the right or left bumper very, very quickly. Tornado happens, job's done. Because when you interact with the cart, it actually gives you a choice. It says, do you want to leave, yes or no? So obviously just, god damn, make sure to do that before you go. <laughs> Otherwise you'll have to replay this little part of chapter seven. And nobody wants to replay stuff, do they? And by the way, again, also what I forgot to mention was, every time that you do, these uh, little secret missable miscellaneous achievements. It gives us a s secret sort of puzzle piece, um, which we need for another secret achievement at the end of the game and for the 100% completion achievement as well. Whew. Again, apologies if I just over explained that, but we are now, we have now hit chapter eight, which is lovely. So you know what that means? That means we've got a chalet to go to, and that means we've got another miserable achievement coming up and a lot of books to read. Again, here I just do a little bit of map rearranging and shuffling just so we're all sort of on the same page. So we make it eventually, and we are actually going to be getting one of the missable achievements in the chalet right here. And you basically, oh, hello Miss Nan, Shagini Nan, Shor Nan, Shurdibadan. How we do? Yep, good. Happy days. So, excuse me, I'm trying to explain to everyone listening how to do stuff. And you, pitiful. So anyway, there's basically going to be boxes that we need to move and put them in an order. But we have to do it in the fewest moves possible. So for one, do not move the map at all when you're in here. Just do not go into your map and move any pieces. Don't do it. And you'll see what I mean. So there's, there'll be two boxes. This one's very, very easy enough. But it's the second puzzle which can get a little bit tricky and a little bit complicated. So, first of all, head back up and then read the little cartographer. Of course, always make sure to read that first. And then we can head back down and start the missable achievement. 
Again, if you do end up missing it, you can just go back and do it in chapter select. So grab the first box of the first mat, second box, put it to the third mat, and then the first box, put it on the third mat. So that one's very, very easy. Um, I will try to explain in... <laughs> I'll try to explain as best as I can as we go along. So obviously from the smallest box will obviously be box one, two, three, and then the biggest box being four. And then from left to right will be mat one, two, and three. So first of all, move the size one box from the first mat to the second. Move the size two box from the first mat to the third. Move the size one box from the second mat to the third. Move the size 3 box from the first mat to the second. Move the size 1 box from the third mat to the first. Move the size 2 box from the third mat to the second. There you go, so the, so the size 2 box from the third mat on the right to the second. Sorry if that got a little bit confusing there. Um, move the size one box from the first mat to the second. Move the size four box from the first mat to the third. Move the size one box from the second mat to the third. So size one box from the second mat to the third there. Move the size two box from the second mat to the first. Move the size one box from the third mat to the first. Move the size three box from the second mat to the third. Then move the size one box from the first mat to the second. Move the size two box from the first mat to the third, and then move the size one box from the second mat to the third. So that should be it, and you can that that's basically within 15 moves. So hopefully you would have got that. Hopefully my explanations went along with the video fine, and it sort of didn't confuse you. Um, obviously, if it did a little bit, I do apologise. But the next thing we need to do then open the map. Go to the bottom leftmost room there. Open up the map and move that bottom leftmost room three spaces to the right and then that should then unlock you the towering intellect achievement so hopefully that wasn't too confusing i didn't over explain things and you sort of went along well obviously if it did i do apologize if it did confuse you but it's obviously always worth just muting me if my voice was <laughs> pissing you off there um but anyway with that done and the tower and intellect achievement out of the way now we can go back to reading some books So this time it's just a case of following exactly the rest I do for this little part.
So congratulations on doing the longest chalet, definitely of the two. We're just going to head to the right and go and see Shagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagag
with not a lot of people on it. So from here, just head up and head to the right. Remember, we started this level or this area on the left where the boat was. We're actually going up and to the right because with all the rearranging, that is where we've now put the boat. So again, hope I haven't confused you too much with that. Ah, hugs. Hacky yard. So, is it any good, the disguise? Uh, uh, no, no. Um, for some reason, she looks like an Eskimo. Why do you look like an Eskimo? Isn't that going to be a little bit obvious? But apparently not. She seems to get away with it. Now, to actually, again, this is a short chapter, but to actually start the festival, <laughs> very funny, we actually need to draw the diagram or make the maps align in such a way that it looks like a fish. So again, copy the exact same way that I do, and the festival will automatically start. But again, we're going to be getting a few... Uh, well, one missable achievement and a few other things to do, so I will return in just a moment. So let us actually begin the festival. Sadly, we can't just spear all the fish and leave everyone hungry. We have to do it proper with a rod. Ugh, I've had it up to here with your rolls. So anyway, we are getting a missable achievement in just a bit. But first, what we need to do is actually speak to the young lad drawing fish in the dirt. Now he's located on the map piece where the river sort of shoots off in sort of three different directions. So I'm actually sort of trying to get the Missable Achievement ready first, which is why you see what I'm doing there. But like I said, if we now spin the sort of three different direction-ish, <laughs> direction-ish, map the wrong way round, oh, the other way round, then we can speak to the guy. And what that's going to do is he gives us a draw on a four fish that we need to catch. Basically, we have to rearrange the map in such a way that it looks like the fish that he has drawn. First up though, let's snag that missable achievement. So the way to do that is on the left hand side, you'll see obviously where the fish head is on the map. All you need to do then is put the tail next to the head and that's the map piece with the smallest section of water in it with what appears to be a gap in the middle. Put that by the uh, right by the head and then press A to fish. So that's the one. So then press A to fish. Then when you see the rod move in, press A again, voila. Achievement done, and now we can actually move on. So that should be the strange catch achievement. If you try to fish without doing that, um, Carter will say something like, uh, the fish are not biting today or something. So you actually have to put it in that order to be able to get that. So again, now all you got to do is basically just copy and follow exactly how I put the map pieces. Fish for that fishy, fishy fish fish that smells fishy. Then the cutscene happens when you do all four. We good, Bri? Yeah, we good.
so there it is now Kato and Shumamanam can basically go to chapter 9 sadly and in all fairness chapter 9 was just you know, kind of pissed me off a bit in all fairness uh, <laughs> probably definitely my least favourite chapter of the entire game because they're not the squares as you can see they're not just um, one square pieces they basically come in different shapes and sizes in four so does get potentially a little bit frustrating and it, it's not too bad but there is a lot that we need to do and that we need to cram in and obviously the pieces are very articulate and particular um, obviously in terms of what where you can actually fit it so it's like a crap game of Tetris really so obviously grab the map piece and then speak to this beautiful little angel right here and then we're just sort of gonna head up to the right um, sort of next to this little bit of rock formation now there is obviously one more missable achievement in this as well and that is for finding different pieces of a snowman um, which can be there's only one that could be uh, potentially annoying to be quite honest but anyway Enough, enough of the negativity. Come on, we got this. Come on. Come on, boys and girls, we got this. Now, this guy's an idiot. He's exploring, but he keeps losing all his backpack and tools and stuff. Obviously, it's up to the little girl who uh, doesn't know where she's going or what she's doing to find his bloody crap. So that's what we're going to do. Again, no more negativity. So obviously, swing it around. Um, obviously, again, just... Hopefully I've gone sort of slow enough. Uh, this is backpack, by the way. Hopefully I'll go sl slow enough with the map that you can just sort of keep up and uh, follow along with what I do. So here you go. Um, you bloody useless Santa Claus. You're like, you're like Santa Claus's brother or like, you know, little nephew in all, all the films where he's cut the kind of useless one but comes up with the goods in the end, sort of. So head into the forest now that the bridge is fixed and obviously you know just try and try and keep it yeah, you know obviously have a look and try and follow along as best you can obviously you've been doing it anyway but this seems to be a bit more this map does can tend to be a little bit more confusing so but hopefully we can get along with it fine now basically what we're looking for is a map piece and it's not actually here. What we need to do is actually spin this boy around. Like so. And then when we get it up. <laughs> when we get it up. I've got no problem with that, honest. Uh, the next map piece should be by the bridge. So with the new map piece up then, we're going to align it with the sort of, what kind of looks like a fishing hole, a nice fishing fountain sort of thing. And then we're going to speak to Captain Bruh. Captain Bruh, that'll do. Close enough. So of course, make sure to grab the next map piece, that's basically going to be our first square piece. That's what we're going to call it, because I'll be calling it that a few times as we go through the game. There's not many, It's you've either got a, a giant T or a Z or an L. So it's either, it's two Zs, a T, an L and a square piece. That's, I'm pretty sure they're the only ones that we need or that we're going to get. So pop that one up, that's the sort of main area is the square piece right there. And if we just keep heading all the way up the screen for now, past this little fishing hole, we finally see the snowball head. That is what we need to collect to build a snowman with later, so make sure to grab that snowman head before. And you can only get that the first time you put the square piece down. So now again, it's a little bit of moving, we're going to be moving the T and the Z's about. And this time, of course, we're going to be heading down. And we're going to be going on the ice for the first time. Now, of course, this is... Again, this part will be obvious, but obviously you'll be copying and following what I'm doing with the map pieces anyway. But there will be different sort of ice sections uh, that we need to do to get to certain areas. But it is basically all just more or less straightforward. 
you can't really get lost but it all depends on sort of which way you flip the map as you'll be able to see in just a little bit Yeah, so as you could see then, obviously doing it in a sort of, you've got to do it in a particular way, otherwise you're not getting anywhere. Um, so that bit can be tricky, the ice part, to be quite fair there. But hopefully we've got to the same point with no problems. You pick up the map piece that is on the rug, we don't need it for now though. Uh, but we are going to be heading towards the right hand sort of corner where we'll be able to unlock a gate. The car was doing like a little... Michael Jackson, hee hee, jogging the spot for some reason, or the sort of front man moonwalk, woman backward moonwalk, <clears throat> anyway, so again, we need to, and also another thing that we need to do, we need to place ourselves in a sort of particular area to be able to flip ourselves around to get onto the next area or next map piece or something, so it is all about where you stand as well. So yeah, as I said, this is definitely one of the more sort of complicated ones in terms of how, uh, getting the map pieces exactly right. But once we do it, we're going to be heading up now, sort of through the mist and the fog, and we're going to be talking to Captain Bra again. I always feel like I could give him a better nickname, but it's late at night and my brain's on the sort of shutdown. Well, it's usually on the shutdown anyway, but even more so now. So speak to Captain Bra for just a minute. After you rearrange the map exactly as I've done it, uh, once we head down, we're going to see some twigs just by these rocks here. So before you go through the gate, remember to pick up the twigs. That will be for the uh, missable achievement for completing the snowman. And um, that'll be for his arms, not his weenus, of course. Snowmen don't have weenuses. They'll sort of melt off. Ow. Ah, that, that actually hurts me. So what we're actually going to do now we're going to be getting the third and final missable snowman part which is just a hat and we have to do it in again we have to do it on the ice but it's not as complicated as it all seems thank god for that so obviously to start off then make sure the square piece is to the right of where the sort of ice fishing hole is there that is where the start of the ice is so that's what you need to do the ice fishing hole on the left of the big square piece there. The piece at the top doesn't matter, don't worry about that. So get yourself on the ice. Uh, that, by the way, that is genuinely some top class legendary ice, uh, ice skating, not falling once. 
Then for the next part, you can actually get rid of this square piece. The piece that we need is with the old guy and the sort of monument that, that he's uh, standing next to, the one with the diving board looking bridge thing. Put that on and this is where we actually find the hat. So that's it. Now we've got all three missable items. Uh, the base of the snowman is now in the uh, square area, the sort of main area. So we'll go looking for there. The pain in the ass now is actually getting back to civilization. <laughs> I really hope that you make you don't make a, a, as much of a butcher crap job that I did. It took me about 10 minutes to get back because I kept spinning all the pieces and ended up getting myself lost. But this is what you need to do from where we are. We just need to get the square piece sort of next to us as much as we can and then eventually we, we will get back to civilization. Hopefully it doesn't take you 10 minutes to get back. Oh my god, the ground. I've been slipping on ice for 10 minutes now. My god damn poor legs. And that one ankle I've been... That one heel and ankle I've been uh, slipping on as well. That's taking a bit of a battering. But can't beat it. So, what we're looking for then is the uh, snowman base. And it's actually behind one of these gates. It's not behind this one. It's uh, behind one of the darker area um, gates. So again, it depends on how you've got the map is depending on where it is. So for me, it is right here on the bottom left hand corner. You interact with it, that will get you an, the sixth final um, secret puzzle piece and the achievement, Frosty Friend. So thank God that is done. Now we can actually move on with the story. And this bit, um, we're going to sort of head up to the right. We're going to be talking to Santa's useless nephew right here. Or Santa's useless brother. Um, because <laughs> Wait, now, <laughs> now we've got to get something else for him. So, well done. Well done, you monkey nuts. Anyway, so, it's not too bad, but it could start potentially sucking a lot of donkey bowels. But um, basically now we've got to uh, spin this round and this is the Windy Valley. Now what you need to do here is his backpack again, idiot, in the middle of the thing. So to get back down, you'll have to place yourself in a sort of, in the sort of middle, if you can, position. But you've got to make sure to press A as you, you're going past the bag. You can't actually just pick it up automatically. So as you're going down, press the A button as you're going past it and that should pick it up. Then we can give this bloody idiot his backpack. Now, what we need to do, we need, once again, to align the map in such a way that it lights up these three monoliths. So there's three different rock monoliths. We have to rearrange the map in such a way that they line up. Now, genuinely, it confused the crap out of me, and it took me quite a while to sort of figure them out. So what I've done is actually get the three screenshots from a website called Video Chum. So thank you for that, guys. And I've just put them up here um, instead of actually showing you the actual pieces. So hopefully this won't be too bad. But this is the first uh, way that you've got to do it. Um, I'll, I'll keep it up on screen for about 20 seconds. But of course, more than welcome to pause it just in case. So make sure to copy this exact image right here first. And then once you're done with this... You should get a message that says one side of the monolith is glowing, which is all good. So when we get that one then, um, once again, like I said, I, I've put up the second screenshot for you to copy right here. Apologies if you if you would have preferred me to do it, but again, it took me so long to sort of figure out what the hell was going on. I just thought this was a bit easier. So this is the second screenshot. This is the second way that you've actually got to put the map for the second side of the monolith to start glowing. So, again, hopefully it won't take you too long. But again, thanks to the guys over at Video Chums for the screenshots there. So now when you click on it, it should say two sides of the monolith are glowing. And for the third and final screenshot, this is it. And you should by now have this sort of white glow um, as you're doing it. So again, copy this exact, exact screenshot. And then that should be all three done. Beep. 
<laughs> anyway, so this is what it now should look like. So, and for the final, final one, what we need to do when everything's all good, we actually need to move the L. All we're doing is the uh, two L's and the T. So again, just copy exactly as I do here. This is the easiest one to sort of do. So you've got to obviously get it from the monolith over to the big statue on the right-hand side. So it's basically like a, a left-sided T and the two L's are sort of facing away from each other, if that makes sense. So hopefully it did, and hopefully you've gotten to that same point. We now have this new map piece as soon as you've done everything right. Uh, and the easiest part that I would actually put it onto is actually onto the square uh, map piece to be quite honest I just that will just be the easiest thing for us but now what we also have to do is we actually have to get out of this place now I've seen quite a lot of people trying to just use these sort of going through the sort of windy woods method for me that pissed me off to absolutely no end so I found this to be the easiest way. Now remember, you can actually walk to a, a different point, uh, fling that new map piece around, or the map piece that you're on around, and then uh, move on to it that way. So that's exactly what I've done. So grab the piece with the statue first, and then um, put it literally wherever you can on the white, which is right there. So go ahead and walk up to it. For some reason, people were escaping using the Windy Woods. I just found it too frustrating and too complicated. So get a new map piece, go up, and then what you can do is obviously find another piece which you can walk onto and then get yourself on the on the uh, square piece. Generally, I found that was the I found that to be a much much easier way of doing things instead of pissing around with the wind. I did try, and it took me about half hour to be honest to get absolutely nowhere. So in my frustration, I done it this way, and I'm super glad I did. You know, as soon as I move stuff out of the way. <laughs> right. So I obviously could have made that a hell of a lot easier then. But that's all you need to do is get the one with the statue and then move yourself onto the square piece. Job's done. Move the new piece back to where it was and then head on down. And we are basically almost finally done with this chapter. Yes! Screw this chapter. You cannot see it, but I am actually flipping it off. That's how much it annoyed me. Oh my god, cute little puppy dogs though. Oh my god! So cute! So, all we finally have to do in this chapter... Come on, Granny, you just... I haven't got enough gas to just swoop down and pick me up. Screw you, right? You obviously hate me, and that's fine. So, talk to Captain Bruh, talk to Shinan, and then you just need to talk to the guys below, talk to Shinan again, and then we can finally, finally get out of here for Chapter 10, which is the shortest one of the game, it's the easiest one of the game. Ah, uh, nice.
I can't actually tell you the uh, genitalia buzz that I got after completing that chapter finally because it just annoyed, genuinely annoyed me that much. So there's only one thing that we've got to do in this chapter and that is go to the chalet. Of course, the, the main thing that we are going to be doing here, we're going to speak to uh, Mr. Miyagi right here as we do throughout the game. But of course, the main thing once again is just to read all the books. Now, if you've copied exactly what I've done throughout chapters 4, 6 and 8, then you will get the Voracious Reader, or Vocarious Reader. I forget which one it is, but you will get the achievement anyway. So hopefully, you should get it at the same point that I do after reading all of the books here. I hope you have, guys, because I don't like it when you miss out on one thing. I don't like it. Wow, so a secret bookcase opens, but remember we're not going in. Do not join these little Mr. Miyagi douches yet. We've still got two more bookcases to read. So before you do that, read these two, and then that should be the Voracious Reader, Vocarious Reader achievement, whatever the bloody word is, um, unlocking for you. And then you can go ahead and join them for a nice little image. Okay, we've actually got to climb uh, two lots of stairs first before we get to the next ones, but then we can join them after. So I do genuinely hope that you will get it the same time as I do here, because that would be nice for everyone involved.
Well, tis very nice, but tis no pool, English. No, we've actually got to go. Hon, I need to get back to me grandma. She made those nice, you know, homemade cookies and sausage rolls and stuff. And, you know, as much as I've enjoyed eating ice and sand and grass and stuff, could could do with a proper, a, a, a bit of proper grub now. A proper grandma grub, you know what I mean? Mountainous food, just ugh, the best. Anyway, we've got to go through this whole procedure first. As soon as we do that, then we can go climb up the tree. That's a big hole to climb up. Hmm. So we've only got one more thing to do now. Oh Christ, you nearly pushed me off, you psycho son of a bitch. Anyway, the only thing that we've got left to do now is we've got to connect all the pieces of the map. There's about seven for us to do. And once again, uh, it would have basically, t it, I think it took me about seven to eight minutes to connect every single one. So what I've done again is thank you to the guys at Video Trim. I've just put screenshots Again, left it for about 20 seconds, so pause the game here, uh, pause the video here, sorry, and just copy these screenshots exactly as it is. As soon as it's in the right order, in the right way, you'll get the complete map option, so then you'll be able to do that. This will be the second one. Oh, sorry, no, this is still the first one, hang on. No, this is the second one. So, again, 20 second pause, uh, pause the video, 20 second screenshot. Just copy exactly as it is done here. Again, like I said, the video would have been literally 20 minutes or so longer by the time I put everything together. So I just thought this was easier. So hopefully that's good for you guys and gals. Well, there we go. Press Y. Or press the triangle or whatever. Whatever you're on as soon as it's up. This will be the third one. Again, out of seven. Luckily it does just get a little bit easier for us. I see the ice map, and I want to throw something at my TV. But it was quite expensive a couple of years ago, so I'm not going to do that. And anyway, it's not worth losing your TV over. So you do that, again, that might take sort of 10, 15, 20 minutes, depends how quick, obviously, you can get all the pieces together. But that's it now. That is literally the end of the game, so congratulations. Have you enjoyed it? We do still have two achievements left to get, mind. And that is for uh, get basically um, playing the secret cutscene, which we can only get at the main menu after you complete the game 100%. So that's for getting all the six pieces uh, of the puzzle, the all six um, missable achievements, and getting the vocacious for various reader achievement as well. So finally... Granny's jo well, Granny's job's done. Then she's just been floating around in the sky waiting for us to come up. I'm gonna I'm gonna call child neglect on that one. To be honest, uh, we do need to actually 
um, go with the map pieces there, get it together. And that is that, so we've made it. So congratulations, guys and gals. Just watch the cutscene and enjoy. Basically, after this is going to be, again, around a 10-minute cutscene. You're going to see Granny and Kato jet off all around the world where she's been. Another couple of minute cutscene after that, and then we can get the final two achievements. So once all the endings are done and we get back to the main menu, like I said, as long as you've got all of the achievements, the six missable achievements, underneath the play option here, you can see secrets. So simply click on that and that will actually now, that should, as long as you play through the game sort of in one run, that should now unlock the home sweet home achievement and the achievement, the little cartographer for completing it 100%. If you didn't complete it in sort of one run and it doesn't unlock, um, try a couple of the different puzzles again and it should then work, especially the Hanoi Tower one in Chapter 8.1. Uh, but that's it then, guys and gals. So thank you so, so much for watching. I uh, hope you had a laugh and a good time, as we always do through these uh, games and guides. Hope you enjoyed the game as well. Don't forget to check me out on all my socials, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and on my Patreon as well. All the links are provided in the description below. Don't forget, of course, to like, comment, and subscribe as well. Big shout out to TimG84 and my other Patreon supporters as well for the continued support for the channel. I really, really do appreciate that. But that's it. So thank you once again, guys and gals. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Big love.